channel if you're new welcome so before I get into this video I want to mention please subscribe to my channel and if you are subscribed please hit the notification button so you do not miss out any of my videos now that I got that out of the air like every typical youtuber um, today is a tips Thursday video but it's not just a tips Thursday video it is also a recommended video so so far I have two recommended videos on my channel and this will be the third so I want to thank everybody who's been re recommending videos to me because this makes it a lot easier to see what you guys want to see on my channel and it also shows the support of y'all guys actually watching me I love you guys I love my new subscribers and my OG subscribers thank you for watching me it means the world to me anyway so this tips Thursday video is going to be about how to start a beauty channel slash YouTube channel. Now I do want to say this before I get into the actual video is that if your reason that's holding you back is because you feel like you're not ready or it's not the perfect timing, just do it because you're never going to have the perfect moment and the best part about life and just progression is starting off with nothing or barely anything and growing into something that is beautiful or to be the person that you want it to be. So progression is always key. If you go back to my very first YouTube video and compare it to my newer videos, you can see a whole difference within a year frame. I don't think it's been a complete year, but you see my growth. So yeah. I'm going to be looking at my phone throughout this video because I don't want to miss out any tips, but now that I said everything I had to say, let's get into the video. Okay, so I broke these categories down into five, and if I don't go in depth into these categories and you still are unclear about something, then I will link a playlist that helped me when I started my beauty channel about almost a year ago. So the first thing I've written down is channel name. Now I do want to see, make your channel name unique. Uh, I regret doing Beauty by Rissa because that is so cliche. Another thing I do regret, which is another topic that I have written down, is to check all social media platforms if your name is available. Now when I first started, my channel was going to be Girls vs. Tumblr girl versus tumblr and that was going to be my name so i made sure that everything was taken by girl versus tumblr but i ended up not liking that because the concept of what i wanted to do with my youtube channel was just too much for me at the moment so i went with beauty by Rissa, which was pretty cliche and yeah and when i went with beauty by Rissa, there was other beauty by Rissa, so yeah, I have my usernames all over the place. So at some points, I'm lovely capsule. Some I'm lovely capsules. Underscore beauty by Rista, Underscore ao cookie. It's just everywhere. So make sure you don't have any numbers. Make sure your name is unique and check all your social media platforms to make sure that is available. Okay, so the second thing that's on my category is lighting. Now lighting is something that can be progressively invested into. So what I mean by that, I'm gonna start off with free. And the best free lighting is natural lighting. So if you can set up your makeup station and your camera right by a window, that is perfect because you'll get the best lighting. But here's the thing with that, because it's natural lighting, you have to worry about overcasting, um, the time of day, it's a lot of things you have to worry about, so usually if I do use natural lighting, I have a help with the fluorescent light, uh, a light I'm going to mention later on. So the next thing that I used, which was after natural light, was uh, like, it was like a little lamp, but I used fluorescent lights. It was very harsh actually, now that I think about it, but it worked at the moment when I took pictures, and that's all that meant at the moment and the second thing I used that bumped it up was a softbox light slash and or um, an umbrella light now umbrella lights vary from a range of $20 to $50 um, so as well as softbox lighting so it's the next best thing um, I like it I still use it it gives you a nice soft glow nice soft fluorescent lighting it's just a really nice thing and it's really cheap compared to what I'm going to mention next the next lighting that I upgraded to was a diva ring now these light rings 
are very expensive. They go from $150 to $300. Some are more, some are less. I know you can make a create a DIY one, but you're not going to get the same effect as a DIY one and actual diva ring. But it's definitely something to work into because usually people just need this and this is all the lighting they need. And of course, you set up lighting in certain areas. So now that I talked about the lighting and I kind of dabbled into lighting position. Now, when you film a video, you want to really make sure that you have really good lighting. You don't want too many shadows. Like, it's kind of off balance here because I have a light here, but I don't have a light here, so there's shadow casting this way. So to combat that, you will have two lights here and the light in the middle. And usually that's my diva ring here and my two softbox lights or just two fluorescent lights. But yeah. That's what I, all I have to say about lighting. Like I said, if I don't go in depth into this topic, I will leave a playlist down below that will help you. So the next topic I'm gonna talk about is cameras. So people are going to agree with me and disagree with me on this one, but honestly, I've seen this in so many videos. They're like, you don't have to start off with a good camera. That's true to a certain extent because you don't want to start off on your webcam because back then it was okay for YouTube to film videos on your webcam, but now it's not because it's going to be like 240p, 140p quality and mm, yeah. So I do recommend if you have a good quality phone camera, use that. So if you have a good iPhone camera or a good Samsung camera, use your phone. You don't have to go out and buy a camera because they make phones to be able to compete with some point and shoots, some DSLR cameras. It's not the best, but it is definitely better than your webcam. Now the next camera that I'm using is a DSLR camera and it's a digital single lens reflex camera. That's what I believe DSLR stands for. And these are really good. They are built pretty bulky though, so it's kind of a hassle trying to do vlogs with them. So there are other cameras for that if you want to like get into the vlog life. But DSLR cameras are great for taking very detailed photos and detailed videos, and you definitely want to look into lens. The thing about DSLR cameras, you really have to do your research and actually get accustomed to the camera. It's not like, oh, just press play and you're good to go. But I will link a playlist down below that goes in depth about that stuff because I learned so much from this channel. So yeah, hopefully you'll learn a lot too. Now, still with DSLR cameras, I do want to say there are DSLR cameras that have viewfinders and don't have viewfinders. Now my very first camera did not have a viewfinder, so it was so hard filming. I was out of frame a lot of times. It was blurry, it was blurry. I didn't know what was going on, so it was very like very frustrating. And my camera had really bad autofocusing, so that was pretty a struggle. It was pretty much a struggle. But yeah, if you don't have a camera that has a viewfinder, um, you can look into monitors that you can hook up, like with HDMI monitor, uh, with an HDMI cable, and hook it up to a monitor so you can see what you're doing. I did that for my faux freckle look, and I was still using my other camera, but it was so much more in focus than my other videos because, yeah. I was seeing what I was doing. Now before I had the monitor, I had this program that was only for Samsungs and it was able to, it, it was like a DSLR remote app. It was pretty cool. It's just my Samsung wasn't that big so I really couldn't see what I was really doing. But you were able to control the camera through your phone. And before that, I was using a mirror, so it would have a mirror propped up behind my camera, angled at a certain way so I can see it, if it cut off or whatever. It was a struggle, but it's definitely worth it. If you can get a DSLR camera with a viewfinder, go ahead and invest the time and money for that. Okay, so this is like my fourth time recording this part because my phone is blowing up right now. So apologize, I apologize for that. So the next thing I wanna mention is sound quality and I wasn't sure whether I should mention this one first or the next category, but I'm gonna go with sound quality. Anyway, if you start off with your iPhone recording videos, you might as well use the free 
apps that come with Apple, like iMovie and voice memos. So if you edit with iMovie, you can just use the headphone mic, like the headphones that come with the Apple phone and use the mic on that. Of course, you want to pull it away because when you use certain, like say certain letters, like P's and T's, like P's and T's, the, the mic catches that and you don't want to hear that whenever in the final product. So it's best to like either pull the mic away or turn it the other way around and talk loud so you can still hear yourself. And yeah, you can record in the editing app of iMovie and if you do that, it already auto adjusts the music. So every time you talk, the music will dim down and then when you stop talking, you know, the music will be fine back to normal but if you are not using iMovie and if you're using Adobe Premiere Elements like I am using I think I'm using Premiere Elements 15 now but I was using 13 I did use my iPhone at first the voice memos and I recorded what I had to say I edit the video and then I recorded the video well the sound what I wanted to say and then I just sent it through my email and just applied it to the final product yeah, if you don't want to do that, I'm not sure if you've been an OG subscriber or if you've seen some of my older Tips Thursday videos. Well, I was using a built-in mic and if you compare what you hear now and back then, you can hear that it was really echoey and my voice, I probably had to amplify it in the editing app because the built-in mic is okay but it's not perfect, it catches everything. So the next best thing to work with your camera is having a attachable mic. And I'm using a Rode mic, and I'm pretty sure you've seen it before in YouTubers videos. It's that long mic that sits on top of the cameras. And it's really good because it just focus on what's in front of the mic and it doesn't catch all the sound around it. So it's definitely something to look into. If you have the money for it, go for it. But if not, the second best thing is definitely your iPhone or just voice memos. So if you made it this far, congratulations. Thank you for watching. So the last tip that I'm going to, well, the last category I'm going to mention is editing programs slash editing softwares. So I started off on iMovie and like I said in the last clip, it is free. So it's great to use. If you have an iPhone, go ahead and take advantage of it. Now, the only con that I think that came with iMovie is that you kind of fall under the generic type of videos. And when you want to like make an impression on in anything in life you want to be different you want to show your own personality and i felt like just having iMovie i didn't go really far but it was a great start now i did upgrade to adobe premiere elements 13 my brother bought it and here's the thing and kind of a like quick tip if you want to get look into adobe premiere elements and there's somebody else who wants to start a youtube channel and y'all are willing to like split the fee in half you guys can both pay for it and split the fee in half and you can use it on up to two computers. I believe if you want to use it for more computers, you have to pay more. But yeah, that's just a quick tip. Anyway, my brother used Adobe Premiere Elements and so do I. And Adobe Premiere Elements is kind, it has like a mode that's like iMovie. It's generic, it's quick, and it's called a quick mode. And it's easy and it's great for beginners. And when you feel like, hey, you're ready to like test the waters and actually put some personality into it, that's the time where you go to expert mode. Like expert mode is legit just the next couple tabs over from quick mode. And if you want to see how I edit my videos, then comment down below that you want to see how I edit my videos and I can show you that. But anyway, I believe at, um, Adobe Premiere Elements is a great program. Like there's a lot of other programs out there that like Filmora, Camtasia, stuff like that. It's really great. Now, one I haven't had experience with, along with the ones that others I just listed, is Final Cut Pro and Final Cut Pro 10, which is like the upgrade of iMovie. So honestly, I feel that Adobe Premiere Elements is the better one because you actually get to learn things, but yeah, it's whatever. But a lot of YouTubers use Final Cut Pro 10, so it's a lot easier trying to find videos of how to edit because a lot of them use Final Cut Pro 10. But 
you know, that's how it is. Sometimes you can take the easy route or you just going to have to search for your own information. For me, my intros and everything, I did that all from scratch and that was frustrating because there was rarely any tutorials that really got in depth like how people do with Final Cut Pro 10. So that's the only thing I have to say about Adobe Premiere Elements 15 or 13 is that it can be quite stressful because there's not a lot of cool tutorials teaching you how to do certain things. So that was it. I really hope you enjoyed this video. I hope this motivates you into starting your own beauty channel or YouTube channel. And like I said, if some of the stuff didn't make sense, I will link a playlist down below that will help clarify everything else because she's an expert. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Please like, comment, and subscribe. And hopefully I see you again in the next one. See you again.